Thank you. So my name is Arseniy Reutov, uh, and today I will um, present my research of random number generators that I conducted back in October 2017 to find vulnerabilities and uh, flaws in uh, smart contracts in the Ethereum blockchain. So before we start, uh, a few words about me. Uh, I work for Positive.com. We do uh, smart contract audits. Also, we protect ISOs. I'm also uh, the uh, team member of uh, PhD Security Conference. And by the way, the CFP is open. And I'm also a web security blogger. Check out my blog at razor.name. So my presentation will be divided into the following parts. Uh, firstly, uh, I will talk about uh, the blockchain itself, uh, the Ethereum and smart contracts, because this is not a blockchain conference. Um, then I will move to uh, my actual research uh, about the results. Uh, then I will talk about how to implement a safer random number generator in smart uh, contract for a smart contract in the Ethereum blockchain, and uh, then some uh, results of uh, and my attempt to automate the discovery of such vulnerable contracts. And there will there will be one more thing at the end. Uh, there will be a contest for you to uh, try your skill at hacking uh, such contracts with vulnerable random number generators, and you will have a chance to win some prizes. OK, let's start. So the first part is about uh, blockchain principles, uh, Ethereum, and smart contracts. So I think that most of you know what blockchain is. It's basically, like the name implies, is a chain of blocks. So each block has uh, a hash of a previous block and it allows uh, to have the chain of uh, all the data that is stored in these blocks. And this data is uh, our transactions, like uh, transfers uh, some for Ethereum, for example, it may be code execution and so on. Uh, that is why blockchain is incorruptible. You cannot uh, reverse its state. Uh, it always moves only forward. Uh, it, sh it is also transparent. It means that uh, you can see all the transactions in each block. Uh, and it is also decentralized. It means that if uh, a single node in the blockchain network goes down, then it won't uh, uh, make the whole network unavailable. Uh, there are there were uh, two uh, stages uh, of uh, uh, blockchain development. Uh, the first stage was uh, the appearance of Bitcoin, uh, the so-called blockchain 1.0, and uh, Bitcoin forks like Litecoin and others. And more recently, uh, a new blockchain technology, blockchain so-called blockchain 2.0, has appeared with the uh, Ethereum and uh, its ability to run smart contracts. So what is Ethereum? Uh, it is basically uh, a distributed world supercomputer according to the words of uh, Ethereum founders. So there is a language, a high-level language like uh, Solidity, or Serpent, or Wapir. The most uh, popular one is Solidity. And you can write uh, smart contracts with it. Smart contracts are basically just a program. And uh, Ethereum runs uh, these programs uh, on every node uh, in its network. Uh, this high-level langu language is, uh, uh, is then uh, is transferred to bytecode, and this bytecode is run in 
EVM, Ethereum Virtual Machine. And each client uh, has an instance of this uh, virtual machine. There are two types of accounts in the Ethereum blockchain. The first one is called externally owned accounts. Uh, these accounts are just regular accounts like in Bitcoin. Uh, so they have uh, as a balance, they can send transactions they, and they are controlled by private keys. Uh, unlike regular accounts, contract accounts have asso associated code, uh, which is basically byte code that I mentioned. Contract accounts also uh, have as a balance and they can execute code. Uh, when you, for example, send uh, a special transaction. And this uh, code uh, is uh, Turing complete. It means that you can compute uh, literally anything uh, in EVM. And of course, it, uh, open, open doors. it opens doors for hackers and for bugs and vulnerabilities in, in these smart contracts. Solidity is uh, the most popular language uh, to write smart, smart contracts. Uh, it looks like JavaScript, but it is strongly typed. Uh, it has no string operations, it has no floats, and uh, it is mainly used to run ISOs and to uh, make uh, ERC20 compatible tokens. And Solidity is Turing complete, as I said. So uh, Solidity smart contracts have bugs, and especially uh, in uh, uh, lotteries and card games, because uh, uh, they have uh, random number generators that I found to be uh, vulnerable. So the next part is my actual research of the random number generators in Ethereum blockchain. So what I did, uh, I basically uh, grabbed all the smart contracts uh, on etherscan.io and also looked for interesting contracts uh, in GitHub. Uh, so uh, I used uh, Elasticsearch, this is a database uh, that has also a nice UI called Kibana. And using this user interface, I uh, and Elasticsearch capability to search contracts, uh, uh, not just contracts, but any text. I uh, found 72 unique implementations of uh, random number generators that can be found in the wild. And out of these 72 contracts, uh, 43 were vulnerable. Uh, I don't claim that this research is complete. It was done in October of last year, uh, and uh, it, w it was done manually. So there may be some more, of course, contracts that may be vulnerable. So uh, I have uh, discovered that there are four categories of such vulnerable contracts. The first one is based on uh, block variables, uh, also on passable hash, passable hash, and private seed, and those that are prone to front running. I will explain each of these uh, categories later. So let's start with uh, random number generators that are based on block variables. Uh, I have found that there, are, there is a certain number of uh, contracts that uh, misused block variables to uh, provide random numbers. Uh, EVM provides uh, several block variables uh, that uh, can be wrongly used in contracts as a source of entropy. For example, Coinbase, which is the address of the miner who have uh, calculated the right hash for the block. 
the difficulty is a measure of how difficult it was to mine this new block, just a number. Uh, gas limit, it's um, a specific term for Ethereum which um, uh, means the limit of uh, uh, gas consumption of all tran transactions in the block. Gas is, uh, uh, is a measure uh, of, um, uh, like in real life, uh, in order to run, to, to drive a car, you need gas. And uh, to run smart contracts, you also need uh, some, um, uh, s some gas, uh, which is a measurement of uh, uh, operations uh, that can be run uh, in EVM. Each operation has uh, a certain number, a certain uh, cost to run on uh, in EVM. EVM, for example, to store some value, you must pay lots of gas, and for example, and f just to just for example lock a message, you don't, you just uh, you you need to pay a small amount of gas. So it may be weird, but uh, yeah. So this gas limit just also a number that uh, some in some contracts is deemed uh, unpredictable, but it's not. Also, the number of the block and timestamp. I think it's. Uh, uh, it's uh, you can understand what it means. Uh, so how why uh, RNGs that are based on block variables are vulnerable? Uh, actually, you even don't need to be a miner to be to to be able to predict the outcome. Uh, in Ethereum, you can make an exploit contract that will just uh, issue. Uh, a so-called internal message. So it will call the target contract and the state of uh, RNG will be the same because if it relies on block variables, the value of these variables will be the same both in exploit contract and in the target contract. So these are examples of simple RNGs that are based on block variables. So as you see, uh, this RNG just relies on block number, and of course, it can be um, it can be considered as safe. And the author admits that in a comment. Another example in this example, you can see that uh, timestamp is used as a source of entropy, and of course, it cannot be uh, secure. Uh, in this uh, example, the contract uses Coinbase, the address of the miner, and uh, the block difficulty variable. And of course, if you call the target contract and use the same code in your exploit, uh, the result, the outcome will be the same. The second category of vulnerable uh, generators is uh, those that are based on block hash. Block hash is a function in uh, uh, EVM that allows uh, you to get the hash of a specified block. Uh, and there are three uh, common major variations, vulnerable variations of uh, misused block hash uh, function. So in the fir first uh, variation is just uh, getting the block hash of the current uh, block. Uh, the, the second one is uh, the uh, block hash of the last block. And the third uh, variation is uh, getting the block hash of some null block. So let's start with the first one, uh, the block hash of the uh, current block. What's wrong with uh, this approach? Uh, it, you need to understand that when you um, execute the code, like on the screenshot, uh, the block number will point to uh, the actual uh, number that is incremented uh, each time a miner picks up uh, new transactions and creates a new block. So at uh, block, 
initialization, the block number is uh, known. So EVM will provide it. However, the block hash of the current block number is not known because the miner has not yet calculated the hash. Uh, that is why uh, the block hash of the current block number will, alwe will always result in zero. It's obvious. But as I discovered, uh, there are many contracts that uh, think that the block hash of the current block number will actually result in a hash. Uh, for example, like this contract, you see that it uses block hash of the current block number for some card game. Or like in this example, uh, I have submitted an issue to GitHub. Uh, it's uh, Exum Zen uh, project. Exum Zen is a developer of uh, Crypto Kitties, if you know, which was uh, very popular. Uh, it was actually hype uh, about two months ago. Um, the second category is block hash of the last block. Uh, the principle uh, of the attack is the same as uh, the block hash, uh, as uh, the RNG that uh, is based on block variables. Because uh, again, you can uh, create an exploit contract, co just copy the RNG code and uh, call the target contract, and the result uh, of the RNG in your contract and the target contract will be the same. This is one example of such contract. You see that uh, it just try uh, tries to get the block hash of the last block. And the third category is the block hash of a null block. Uh, there is uh, a peculiarity in EVM uh, tha that it doesn't allow to get all the block hashes. There is a limitation of 256 uh, blocks and Solidity documentation warns about it. However, um, many contracts um, tend to uh, just ignore or I don't know, just didn't, they ju didn't see this uh, warning, but it's a fact that uh, they don't check that uh, block hash of a null block actually uh, gives some meaningful example. But if you try to get a block hash of some older block, you will get again zero, which makes it predictable. Uh, this is the case of uh, Smart Billions uh, lottery hack. Uh, the uh, the lottery uh, used a block number uh, when the batch was made and uh, put it in the its storage. When uh, uh, when the user requested the lottery to uh, announce the winning number, uh, uh, the smart contract just retrieved the saved uh, block number and tried to calculate, n not calculate, but uh, get the block hash of that block from EVM, but it failed to validate that uh, the hash is actually a hash, so it uh, didn't validate the block number H. And there was actually a bug bounty organized by the owners of this contract, and they uh, asked everybody to, uh, uh, to look for vulnerabilities in their code they were so sure about it. However, in two days, uh, some guy uh, found that it didn't correctly validate this uh, block number H, and he managed to steal 400 Ethereum from this contract. But uh, the uh, developers of this lottery decided that they will stop this and withdraw all the remaining funds. So they were cheating, actually. 
And the last category that is associated with block hash is a variation with a private seed. Um, in its nature, blockchain is transparent. It means that, as I said, you can uh, you can uh, see any transaction, see uh, every operation that was done, and you can see also the internal storage of each contract. Uh, there is uh, in Solidity there is uh, a private scope that. Um, limits uh, uh, that restricts other contracts uh, from accessing your storage, the storage of your contract. However, uh, you can fetch any uh, storage item off-chain. It means that you can uh, see all the items using, uh, for example, a popular Ethereum client called Web3. Uh, one of the most uh, interesting examples of such uh, vulnerable random number generator is the Slotherium lottery that I found uh, firstly on GitHub. So this is uh, the extract, uh, a fragment of uh, its uh, uh, random number generator. As you see, uh, it tries to get the block hash of uh, a block number with some offset uh, pointer, and this pointer was defined as a private with a private scope. So uh, the author uh, thought that nobody would uh, get this, the value of this pointer. Nobody would uh, be would be able to get this right offset to be able to get the block hash and calculate the random number. However, uh, when I reported this issue to the author, he actually uh, was sure that there was no mistake from his side. And he uh, asked me to prove it, <laughs> if it's really uh, vulnerable. So challenge accepted. And uh, using this exploit, which uh, uh, basically used the same random number generator as a uh, installatorium contract and using uh, a pointer that I obtained uh, off-chain using uh, Web3 Ethereum client, I was able to, uh, to snatch all the Ethereum uh, that was uh, on this contract. Uh, Actually, there was uh, there was there were m some more uh, comments from his side. He still didn't. Uh, <laughs> he said good job, but he still failed to implement a proper uh, random number generator. So be sure to check out the GitHub link. Uh, it's funny. So uh, the force. Um, Category is called front running. Uh, to understand front running, you should get uh, some uh, understanding of uh, how transactions are put in a block by miners. So, in practice, um, uh, miners want to get uh, the maximum reward for their uh, calculations. So, they pick up uh, the transactions based on the uh, total consumed gas. Uh, the gas, as I explained, is measurement of how m how difficult it was for uh, a node, for a Ethereum node, to run your smart contract. So they pick up only large transactions and uh, uh, they order them uh, in each block uh, by the ga gas price. Price. So if you set a larger gas price, so your transaction will be the first in, in the block. And the order of transactions in the block is uh, quite important. Um, because if uh, the contract execution uh, depends on its uh, position in the block, then it may 
pose a security threat for such contract. And Tekker just may watch uh, the pool of pending transactions and uh, he may uh, watch for uh, externally submitted uh, random numbers and issue his transaction that will be the first the uh, uh, that will be uh, pre-war to this uh, transaction with a random number and it makes uh, it vulnerable because uh, uh, the EVM will execute the checker's transactions first and uh, he will uh, guess the number before it was announced. This was the case uh, at the uh, contest uh, organized by Zero Nights Conference. Uh, there was a smart contract and a robot who, which uh, uh, submitted uh, random numbers uh, at some period of time um, like one number in a minute and the task was to guess the number. Of course it was uh, vulnerable uh, using front running. Um, you could just uh, observe all the transactions in uh, uh, in the pending transaction pool and uh, issue your transaction with a high gas price so that your transaction will be executed before the robots one, uh, robots one. so uh, it effectively uh, made you the winner of this lottery. And another example is the game which I found uh, uh, on the blockchain called uh, Last As Me. Uh, the logic is simple. Every time a player uh, buys a ticket, he uh, claims the last seat in the round. And the chimer start started the countdown. If nobody claimed the seat uh, within uh, a certain uh, number of blocks, then the last player wins uh, the uh, jackpot. So, again, uh, this... Uh, implementation is also vulnerable to front running issue because you can again observe pending transaction pool and watch for other contestants transactions and uh, claim the check the jackpot with a transaction with a high gas price so this was the part about vulnerable uh, random number generators and the Next one is about uh, how to build a safer one. Uh, there are three uh, uh, main implementations uh, that can be used as a safer uh, approach for random number generators. Uh, the first one is using external oracles. Blockchain is uh, deterministic. It means that it cannot uh, access uh, the environment, its environment. Uh, so in order to, for example, fetch uh, uh, currency rates or weather or something else, you need to use external oracles. This is the scheme of how such oracle may work. Uh, the most used uh, service called is called Oracleize. It allows uh, a smart contract to uh, get the result or uh, get, get any page from the internet. And I found that uh, many contracts uh, use Oracleize to request uh, random.org uh, website, which is a source of uh, random number gener uh, numbers for public um, but in this case, uh, several questions arise. Can we trust Oracleize? Uh, because as you see on the scheme, there is uh, uh, an Oracleize service running on a box at Amazon, for example. 
and we cannot be sure that it's uh, not tampered. Uh, we can we cannot be also sure about random.org and all the underlying infrastructure because anything can happen and it can be theoretically also tampered. Uh, Oracleis provides some means to verify the res the results. For example, TLS notary, uh, but it can be verified only off chain. It means that you cannot uh, check that the results were indeed uh, correct in your smart contract in the runtime. You can do it just <laughs> afterwards when the, uh, for example, winner was determined. Uh, Oracleis provides some even more, even better means uh, using ledger proofs uh, and it allows to verify the results on chain. These are some examples of the uh, lotteries that use Oracleis. Uh, another external oracle is BTC Relay. Uh, BTC Relay is uh, a bridge between Ethereum and Bitcoin blockchains. Uh, and I found an example of a smart contract that uses uh, future blocks of Bitcoin as a source of entropy for Ethereum smart contract. But again, the uh, means of protections of protection in this case is uh, the sole fact that Bitcoin price is higher than Ethereum's and miners uh, won't be cheating in this example. But we can be sure that they won't be cheating. It's just about the uh, price of Bitcoin. So it just uh, makes it harder but does not eliminate uh, the possibility uh, entirely. Uh, another approach is called Signagize. Uh, Signagize uh, is suitable for contracts uh, where there are two parties, the player and the house. Uh, it uses um, cryptographic signature uh, as a source of entropy. And the uh, procedure is as follows. Uh, firstly, player makes a bet by calling smart contract. The house, the smart contract, sees uh, this bet, then signs it with its private key and sends uh, the signature to smart contract. Uh, then smart contract verifies that it is correct using uh, non-public key. And then the signature is used as uh, a source of entropy, is it is used to generate random numbers. So what is wrong uh, with uh, this uh, um, approach? It can be also misused uh, because the only built-in uh, means of cryptographic signature in the serum is uh, elliptic curve, uh, ECGSA. And um, this uh, uh, algorithm allows to uh, allows the house to cheat because in ECGSA you can uh, submit uh, uh, a parameter k. Um, you ca you can uh, choose the k um, so that uh, this uh, the output signature will benefit the house. Uh, and this is the problem because the uh, the house can cheat, and you can see uh, an example of such implementation uh, on the link. I will also share my slides afterwards. The correct approach is using RSA-based uh, signatures because in RSA there is you cannot manipulate input parameters. There is uh, no such K, and uh, RSA uh, uh, is uh, safe against uh, this type of check. 
And uh, thanks to Metropolis hard fork of uh, the Ethereum, uh, modular exponentiation operation became available. So anybody can implement uh, this uh, algorithm in their smart contracts. And there are some open source uh, implementations uh, of RC for Ethereum. Um, and the last uh, approach that you can use to make uh, safer random number generators is uh, a commit reveal approach. Commit reveal is a uh, two-phase. Uh, I want to say that any implementation that uh, determines the winner in just one transaction is always vulnerable. Uh, to make it safer, you need to use at least two phase, two, two transactions. In the first transaction, uh, the so-called commit stage, the owner posts, uh, submits a hashed seed, no clear text. Uh, then the smart contract uh, saves this uh, hashed seed. And in the second stage, called reveal, the owner announces uh, clear text uh, seed and smart contract verifies that uh, the hash of the seed in the commit stage uh, is equal. So it just checks that the seeds are correct using the hash that was submitted earlier. Uh, in commit reveal, uh, the a proper commit reveal should uh, uh, rely on multiple patches because when there is a single patch, for example, when only owner uh, submits his hash seed, there is a problem because the owner can also be the player and when he knows the original clear text seed, of course, he can um, choose the right time and he can uh, know the random number beforehand. These are some examples of uh, commit reveal with uh, float single party approach. A better commit reveal uh, implementation is Rangel. Rangel is a RNG that collects, uh, collects hashed seeds from multiple patches. So literally anybody can participate in uh, uh, each iteration and he can submit his uh, hash seed and then each party is paid a reward for his participation. And this approach is uh, good in uh, uh, for for the reason that nobody knows each other seeds and the result uh, can be considered as truly, truly random. However, uh, if a single party refuses to reveal the original seed, it will um, result in denial of service. I think the best uh, uh, implementation of commit reveal and best implementation of uh, random number generator is uh, a commit reveal with a future block hash. So there are three sources of entropy in this case. Uh, first one is the owner's uh, hash seed, the second one is the player's hash seed, and the third is uh, a future block hash that is not known uh, to anybody beforehand. So the random number is then generated as uh, a hash of two seeds and a block hash. Check out the link uh, below which uh, explains in detail how this uh, implementation uh, works. It's good because uh, it solves minor incentive problem. Uh, so miner can decide on block hash but he doesn't know the owners and players seeds. It also solves owners and central problem uh, because owner doesn't know the future block hash and it also solves 
the case when the uh, player is also an owner and also a miner. It's of course of course unlikely, but this approach uh, this uh, solves even this case because no, uh, the uh, the person person doesn't know the block hash. He doesn't know the owner seed and uh, doesn't know doesn't know player seed. Um, and the last uh, uh, section of my presentation is about uh, the attempt to automate the discovery of such vulnerable implementations. Um, there is a tool called Mithril, uh, created by Bernard Miller, uh, which allows to scan a serum for vulnerabilities to find vulnerable smart contracts. It uses a symbolic execution engine called Z3, which allows to uh, construct the call graph of uh, a smart contract. And having this call graph, I it is possible to uh, find the, uh, for example, as a transfers that are constrained by, uh, for example, block variables. So I decided to use this platform to make a plugin called VicRandom that allows to detect such unsafe value transfers that are constrained by predictable block variables and pass block hashes. So that's it. Thank you. If you have any questions, raise your hand and I'll bring the mic to you. Thank you. <clears throat> uh, thank you very much for the interesting talk. Uh, one question for you, a little speculative, if you will. Do you think the prevalence of some of these uh, poor implementations is, frankly, laziness? Or is it maybe indicative of some folks trying to game the system for their own benefit, you know, criminals or hacker underground, et cetera? Um, and yeah, just kind of curious on your thoughts about that. Well, I think that uh, the main reason of uh, these vulnerabilities, I think that it is um, maybe ignorance or uh, just uh, the uh, Technology that is too new for developers. They didn't catch uh, all the uh, new things because blockchain is uh, very different. Uh, I saw many examples when web developers tried to make uh, such games and they don't understand the concepts behind blockchain. And of course, it leads to vulnerabilities. So they do not understand the platform in the first place. And I think that uh, it is the main reason. I can compare it to web security when uh, back in 2000, maybe 2005, when PHP was popular. Uh, many people got into web development and uh, they did all it wrong. And the language PHP uh, favored uh, such bad practices. It didn't uh, restrict uh, proper usage. And I think that Solidity, uh, the main language for writing smart contracts, also does not uh, provide uh, um, solid means for uh, safer programming. So that's it. Yeah, hi. <clears throat> I, so you brought up the fact that a lot of developers don't understand the blockchain and the technology very well. Um, I'm, I'd have to agree with you, um, which is why, for example, personally, uh, when it comes to Bitcoin at least, there is a really good book by a gentleman named um, Andreas Antonopoulos, who's kind of famous in the scene, and he wrote the Bitcoin book, which gets, it, it's it's a book built for programmers to understand all the different facets of 
blocks mining the the peer-to-peer -peer network of Bitcoin. And I think he, they're working on one for Ethereum right now. But um, I feel like when one tries to learn about Ethereum and smart contracts uh, in particular, um, it, it's really its own thing. And, and you know, where are those re good resources where you can go from a bottom-up kind of approach and learn the nitty-gritty details? Because I feel like when you, as a developer, when you know the details of it, then as you're writing that code for that random number generator, you, you would be able to tell, oh yeah, um, this seed, you know, can be, you know, discovered, you know, by, you know, using that W3 service. So like, what, what, uh, you know, resources would you recommend? Uh, because I'm sure there's maybe other areas of smart contracts that are highly vulnerable, uh, that are not random number generators and could be exploited just as easily within the coming months or even yeah, years. The resources is also a great problem because th I think that there is a lack of such uh, resources, of such guidelines. Uh, I can recommend uh, security best practices for Ethereum smart contracts uh, by consensus. Uh, uh, it's re it has really uh, good um, recommendations for better programming. But uh, as for random number generators, um, you should just make your own research before uh, going into it because there is no common um, pattern, no common uh, library for, for it. So to understand it, you just need uh, to open the debugger and test things. You cannot just blindly uh, think that, okay, I think that the result of, for example, this block hash will be my actual hash. But as you see, it will be zero in some cases. And even the official documentation also lacks some uh, important notices and uh, much work should be done in this direction to Im improve the uh, basis for uh, safer programming in Serum. Uh, just a follow up on that. Um, you mentioned that when the hash ends up being zero, I, I kind of missed that part in your presentation. Um, the, the example was that the, the developers or you know, in that case, are uh, using the hash for the the next block, and that that ends up being zero sometimes. Oh, how is that? Uh, yeah, they use of the past block. This is the problem. The correct approach is the use to use the hash of the some future block, but uh, for for some reason they think that the hash of the past block can be used as a source of entropy, which is not true, of course. And that's because the the previous block is known, right? The hash yeah, of it. course, it's known. So, so then, what is then? Then when in that example where you showed the um, on Etherscan that the that it was zero, how is that even po possible? Uh, it was the example of uh, current block when uh, the when the block hash of the block number was calculated. So not the past block, not the future block, but the current block, and the block hash of the current block is zero. Okay. Thanks for the talk. That was a lot of information. And uh, another question is, how, how is the future uh, block hashes calculated if you don't have the transactions yet? Yeah, to know the block hash of a future block, you need a second transaction. As I said, any implementation relying on a single transaction is flawed. So you firstly need to uh, store the block number. And then you need a second transaction to retrieve the block hash for that block number. And that block number will point to uh, a block that was unknown at the time when the first original transaction was made. Okay, so you mean it's just a hash of the next or whatever the next block numbers, but not the entire hash of the two transactions and all the, all the yeah things just like of uh, of the, the block number uh, yeah the block number of uh, of the block when the bet was made yes okay of, of the uh, first stage hi so what are what are your thoughts on uh, formal verification 
can you use formal verification on these smart contracts and will it be able to, for example, catch these kind of bugs? Uh, uh, well, I think that uh, formal verification is um, actually a, a good approach and uh, uh, I think that such bugs can be formally verified, such uh, cases. And there is an attempt by uh, Bernard Miller that I mentioned previously uh, to make uh, formal, to perform formal verification uh, for some vulner vulnerabilities. Um, and you can, you, you can check out uh, the blog post that he recently made about it. And there is also an attempt to formally verify ERC20 uh, tokens using the K language. Uh, and as I know, there is a working proof of concept as for now. So I think that, yeah, formal ver verification is uh, a, a proper uh, solution for eliminating such bugs. Any other questions? Okay, thank you. So thank you guys. Uh, also, there is uh, a contest that I mentioned that you can participate in and win uh, the Ledger Nana S. This contest features the uh, examples that I showed in this presentation. So if you feel <laughs> confident and lucky, you can try your skill. Thanks. Thank you.